Hey y'all, Charlie here. Uh, today I wanted to make a video that is um, a long time overdue. Many of you may be familiar with one of my other videos, Five Rule 20 Tips That Saved My Life. Uh, that video blew up and it made me want to get back into YouTubing. So a huge thank you to everyone who watched and subscribed and hit the thumbs up button. I'm so glad I was able to help some of you out, especially during the COVID times. So I posted that video three years ago and Roll20 has changed a lot. So I figured it was time to make an updated version of my tip video. So here it is. Most of the tips have been expanded on and I even added a sixth bonus tip for those of you that were already familiar with the last video. So here we go with six Roll20 tips that saved my life. You can right click and drag the map with your pointer tool instead of using your browser scroll bars. If you left click and hold with the pointer tool, you'll make a ping that everyone in the game can see. You can change your player color at the bottom left of the window, which will also change your ping color. Game masters can hold shift and ping an area to automatically force all players to view that point on the map. You can use your character's token as a ruler instead of always switching to the ruler tool. Measure a path by dragging your token with the pointer tool and pressing the Q key before dropping it in its new location. You can draw more precise movement paths by clicking Q multiple times before dropping your token in its final location. Each time you click Q, it will drop an anchor, allowing your token to change direction. You won't see an animation of your token following the path you've set, but everyone else in the game will. You can select any token and press the X key to see its last movement path and the distance it traveled. Double click the header of any character sheet, handout, or compendium article to minimize it on the map. You can minimize multiple windows this way at the same time. Drag these minimized articles and sheets anywhere on the map and then double click them again to reopen them. This is good for hiding character sheets, NPC sheets, or compendium articles that you want to keep at the ready. The other option is to navigate to the Settings tab at the top right of the browser window. Scroll down and click Use Window Popouts for Characters. This is a great option if you have a second monitor. You can pop out your character sheet and just keep it pulled up there the whole session. You can quickly open character sheets without navigating to the Journal tab by holding Alt or Option on a Mac and double-clicking a token. If the token isn't linked to the character sheet, this will not work. If you hold shift while double clicking the token, it jumps directly to the sheet's bio and info tab. You can drag and drop any rollable part of your character sheet to the macro quick bar at the bottom of your browser window. This allows you to roll that feature without opening up your character sheet. Right click the new quick macro button to rename it and change its color. Click and drag the small tab that appears when you hover over these buttons to rearrange them, or drag them away from the quick bar to remove them. To use the macro quick bar, click over to the collections tab and select the show macro quick bar option. The settings tab is a useful tab to get acquainted with. Here you can turn off your Roll20 video chat feature if your group doesn't use it. You can also hide or resize the player avatars at the bottom left of the Roll20 window to give yourself some more real estate for navigating the map. You can also change your display name in the settings tab. It's a good practice to change this to your character's name with your out of character name in parentheses. Make sure to hit save name so it updates your character avatar with your new screen name. If you click over to the chat tab, you'll see a drop down window below the chat box. This is the typing as drop down. Here you can select your character sheet. This will change your player avatar to any art that you've uploaded to your character sheet. It will also show all of your chat messages and roles as coming from your character. This can also be a useful tool for showing NPC portraits to the group. Alright, here's your bonus tip. Game masters can link handouts together to create in-game compendiums and indexes. If you put the name of a handout in single square brackets in the text section of another handout, it will create a hyperlink. I like to combine this hyperlink feature with the table formatting feature to create a single handout that lets me and my players navigate the entire journal tab very quickly. You can then right click any of these hyperlinks and click copy link address. This hyperlink can now be pasted into Roll20 chat. 
giving everyone a quick link that will automatically pop open the appropriate handout when clicked. This means you could copy the link of an important handout and paste it into a macro that can be triggered with a single click to drop into the chat at any moment. Players can also copy these link addresses and hide them in the notes section of their character sheets, so they always have a quick reference to an important handout. So there you have it. Those are my tips. I hope you all found them helpful. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button and let us know in the comments below. And we'll see you next time here on the Chop Chop channel. Peace.